Okay, so this morning we have Cindy Juve. You Good morning, it. Cindy. Good morning. How are you? You yeah, sure I got it right. You got it right. <laughs> now, Perfect. Here, here comes the next one, because Cindy Juve was quite easy. This one is far more complex. One, two, three. Brian Jungwi Watanapo. Very nice job. Round of applause. But I didn't tell you the, the, the hard part of it. A bit off, a bit, a bit of my tongue off. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you, uh, Cindy and Brian. Nice to be here. Right. Great to be here. And ready to give us information as to what's happening there with the United States Embassy. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we have Cindy and Brian here from the United States Embassy right here in Kingston. And what they're going to say, yes, it applies to anybody anywhere in the world. So, so what's happening? Anything happening new? Um, any information you want to uh, pass on to my listeners? Absolutely. Brian and Cindy. Absolutely. The uh, U.S. Embassy is supporting a college fair in October, October 20th and 21st. A college fair, really? Yeah, college fair. We're having universities come down from the U.S. to present a college fair to students uh, in Jamaica. It will be held at the American International School of Kingston on October 20th in the afternoon from 1.30 to 6. And on October 21st at the Hillel Academy, 1.30 to 6 p.m. And admission is free. Come by. We'd love to uh, see more students. Um, and Vernon, this is just a great opportunity for um, Jamaican students and their families to become acquainted with the college application process. Um, Jamaican students tend to do very well in the United States, and we would, you know, encourage their participation not only in the event but to look at, you know, possibly studying in the United States. Now, uh, that fair enough. Give us an idea. Um, what are some of the activities that are planned for that day, and some of the information that you'll be you'll be sharing with um, the students or potential students? Well, the, the U.S. Embassy will be there um, since we're the sponsors of the event. But in addition to that, there'll be several universities from the United States. And the mm -hmm. students and their parents would be able to come to the different booths or the different presentations by those universities and learn a little bit about the application process. And then the embassy would be there as well and could talk to the students and the parents about the visa application process. But that sounds like a brilliant idea. Rather than these students having to get the information on their own, probably trying to communicate by email or so on uh, with these universities overseas, you're telling me you now they, they will be able to come to this fair and you will have a number of re uh, representatives from universities at one place? A absolutely correct. We're going to have representatives from universities such as the University of Pennsylvania, University of Tampa. Yeah, we, have, we have that one, University yeah. of Pennsylvania. Right. Yeah. University of South Florida uh -huh. and um, a whole host of other universities and students can ask the representatives of those universities questions directly about the application process, about mm -hmm. financial aid, all the different kinds of questions that they might have about studying in the U.S. Um, but well, at that fair, will they be able to do anything, put in, put in their applications, or is it just a matter of just getting information? It's just an information gathering mm -hmm. session. But um, just to you know, make the plug again, that's going to happen on October 20th at the American International School of Kingston. And then it'll, the same event will take place at Hillel Academy on October 21st. So, um, and, and both of those occur in the afternoon from 1.30 to 6 p.m. So really it's just in it's sort of an information session to mm -hmm. give students and their families a little bit more... Uh, information about how to apply and and the different programs that are available at those schools. So and again, that's free and it's open to the public. So I expect um, all the students who want to go and study in the United States because it doesn't make sense you stay at home and try to figure out what you have to do. It's best to go to that fair and find out all the information because what I find out what I find out with a lot of lot of us you see is that we um, we sit here, we try to figure out what we need to know, and that we probably go to the states and we realize we don't know half of what we need to know. So I say, why not get information at the sphere so that you're prepared? Uh, we have on the line Donnet. Donnet, how are you? Know, good to have you. Where are you calling from? Calling from Manchester. Man Manchester, the beautiful Manchester. Yes. Mandeville or Litchfield or Mile Gully? Christian. I don't know where, but I'll give you a trouble. Beautiful Christiana. There, yeah, man. Love that place. Hello? Yeah, man. I love that place. You go ahead. Hello? Go ahead. Are you hearing me? You can go ahead now. Uh, good, morning. good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have this friend. She's having this problem. She had, um, she had, um, overstayed and, and she 
was she um, had had this appointment at embassy, which she and her daughter and her, and her husband got to, but she overstayed in Curious, so it's having a problem, but she can't. She don't know who to go to, who to contact, because she, everybody she contacts, she's not getting to. So. By the way, have you asked her to call this program? She's afraid. Afraid? I always advise people to call. Yeah, man. She's afraid. She's because afraid. No, she can't be afraid. Listener, yes. so because guess what? No, if you call, you yeah. might you will, you will have to not give her information, which is second-hand information. So you should encourage her to call the program and I get information. I encourage her, but she's afraid. She said if she has to come on here. Really? You, uh, but let me ask you something. If you're if you're afraid of food, you know what's going to happen to you? <laughs> Die. Die of hunger. <laughs> Alright, so encourage her to call, call again. But you continue, continue. Um, you want to yeah. answer that one, uh, Cindy? Or yeah, sure, sure, mm -hmm. I can take it, um, yes. Donette. Yes. Um, yes. It, it sounds like your your friend is, uh, she's coming for an interview or she's already come from for the for the interview and didn't get through? Yeah, she's uh, she already come for the interview, but um, um, they said they want, they need a letter from Curator, uh, from Curator to to ensure that she doesn't have a record, a bad record. But she's trying to get to everybody and she's not getting through. So okay. she doesn't know what else to do. Uh, what I would suggest for her to do is to attempt to get that police certificate. Is is that what she's? Is that what's missing from her case? Excuse me, I didn't hear. However. She's missing a, a police certificate for her case. Is that what you're saying? They said she, she should, should get a record from Curiosa to show that she doesn't have a record. Yeah. A record. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty standard for any place that you've lived for more than six months. And yeah. this sounds like an immigration visa. And in order to process that immigration visa, I mean, I can't talk about a specific case. Um, yeah. But anytime the embassy is asking for a document, it's just yeah. one of the requirements in order to process the case. Oh, and so. Oh, oh, oh. What she could do, she can yeah. email um, Kingston IV at state.gov. Yep, Kingston with the letters IV yes. at state.gov. And, and she can just ask for a clarification of which okay. document is missing from her case. Okay, and that, yeah. that, would, that would apply to anyone's case. So again, I, I didn't do the interview, um, and I wouldn't be able to talk about a specific case, but okay. sometimes in order to process people... Um, for immigration, there are documents that are re that are required that we're not able to process until process okay. the case until we have it. So, um, okay. but that's not unusual. That happens to a lot of people. So she'll have to follow up with uh, Curacao to obtain that document. And people do uh -huh. do but do that. They are saying that she must go over. She doesn't have the passport. She doesn't have any documents to go because the embassy really has her, her her passport and so on. So. Well, in, in that in that case, again, I would just use that email address of Kingston IV at state dot gov, just to clarify, okay. you know, what exactly her particular needs are. Okay. 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 One more question. Uh huh. Don yep, I'm still here. Yeah, I, I want to apply for a visa, a visiting visa. I have a daughter over there. She's an American citizen, but I'm not interested to go over there. <laughs> to go over there and uh, and leave or stay for at the moment because I have two grandkids taking care of, which I am the only one for them right now. Sure, Donette, a, a lot of people in Jamaica have children that are living in the United States. Um, yeah. They come to the embassy. Oh. They they hello. Hello. You have to. Yes, you can't be on hello. air. You can't be on air and be talking to somebody else at the same time. Because uh, if you hello, do that, hello. are you hearing me? Yes, I'm here. Right. I'm okay. saying you, you're talking to somebody else while you're on air. I'm saying you can't do that. Okay. All right? Okay, Mr. Dan. No, man. You stick with the okay. conversation. Or else you know that I will take my shop and beat you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, oh, okay, so Donna, just just to finish up with your with your call about your particular situation, um, yeah. lots of Jamaicans have family living in the United States, even have children, grandchildren living in the United States. When you come to your interview, the most important thing that you can bring with you is honesty. So you're going to tell the officer what your intentions are, what you're going to okay. do in the United States, and then you're going to demonstrate to the officer okay. what your ties to Jamaica are. 
That's what happens okay. at every interview, not just yours, but every interview. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good luck. Okay, Miss. Have a good day, Donet. All right. Then I wish you okay. that you succeed. Wish you all the best. You see. Okay. Sir. I want to get to you. Must call me back. You know. Yeah. I'm going to call you. Hey. Eh? I'm I'm going to get her and yes. get her to talk to either our father or somebody else. Right. All right. You have a wonderful day. All the best. You, you take too, care. Sir. Thank you very much. All right. Cindy and Brian, we're talking about that uh, college fair now, and um, I'm sure there are persons out there. We're talking about this college fair, which is going to take place on October 20 to 21. Hold on. So start, today's what? I'm trying to figure out. Today, what date is today? September 23rd. September. So we have time. Okay, so persons, you must, you can't miss this. Come on, October 20 to 21. Make a note of this. Uh, this is the uh, college fair and that will be held at the American International School of Kingston. Starts at what now? 1.30 to 6, a, 6 p.m. And on October 21, it starts at the same time, 1.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. at Hillel Academy. And that's right here in Kingston. Both places are right here in Kingston. That's right. Now, I've been, I'm sure there are persons out there who want to get more information. Uh, what can they do? Who can they make contact with? Where is their telephone number, or email address that they can probably send an email to? Um, sure, of course. The easiest way to get in contact with us is either contact the library at the mm -hmm. embassy, and the email address is Kingston I R C at state dot g o v. I'll say it one more time: Kingston I R C at state.gov or if you just want to send a quick note you can always ask a question on Facebook and check out our Facebook page it's US Embassy Jamaica like our page leave a message and we'll reply mm -hmm. all right just want to remind our listeners that that college fair will take place on uh, uh, from October 20 to 21 uh, the first one will take place at the American International School of Kingston. Starts at 1.30 uh, p.m. and goes up until 6 p.m. The next one will be at uh, Hillel Academy on October 21. It starts at um, 1.30 and goes up until 6 p.m. I think we have Kem on the line. Good morning, Kem. How are you? Where are you calling Good from? Good morning. Calling from St. James. Hey, St. James, good morning to all my friends of in St. James. Orange District, um, Montego Bay, where's Montego again? Montego Bay. Uh -huh. Montego Bay. Yes, you go right ahead. Um, first, I'd love to know where they reach the F3 category. The F3 category? Yeah. <coughs> all right, you want to take that, Cindy or Brian? Well, Cindy, you'll take that one. Sure, I can take this one. Uh, it's Cam, right? Yeah. Okay, for the F3 category, the date that we're taking right now for according to the September Visa Bulletin are cases that were filed um, May 8th of 2004. May. May. Uh huh. The 8th of okay. May 2004 are the cases that we're taking now. Okay, my son turns 22 in November, but on the filing, he's supposed to be 19. Okay. Um, but I, I wrote to the, to the visa place and um, to inquire, because he's not on the system right now when I check, I would love to know what to do. And um, at the interview, can I, can I say to them that my date is full? Uh, for your particular case, um, I, I wouldn't know. I, I would have to wait until you, until you have your appointment. Um, and, and I wouldn't be able to go into the, the specifics of your case on a radio show in any case. Um, but um, your, your best bet is to, to work through, um, at this point, if, you're, if your petition is not at the U.S. Embassy, if you have not been contacted that you have an appointment at the U.S. Embassy, your best bet is to go through um, USIS, which is where pe all petitions are filed in the United States, and that um, address is um, www. U w w uh -huh, w w w s c i s c i n um dot g o v dot g o v because I wrote an email to them and they, they, they did not respond to me. I wrote to the inquiry address. 
Yeah, sometimes it takes sometimes it takes a, a little bit of time. I would reach out to them again. Another option for you is to look at travel dot state dot gov and let me spell that out for you okay uh-huh. it's travel the word t r a v e l uh huh dot state s t a t e travel dot state dot g o v and uh Kim, what you're looking for at travel.state.gov is information about the National Visa Center. So information about when your visa becomes current, an idea of when your inter- when your interview might occur, or where your petition is in the process can be found by logging on to travel.state.gov and looking under we, National Visa Center. We, we receive a letter that um, says we're supposed to be waiting on a date for interview. Great, great. It looks like it's moving through the system then. So yes, what? But, but I don't hear anything about my son. That is my concern. Okay. Well then, ma'am, let me let me let me give you the email address to reach out directly to the embassy. Um, but just for all of the listeners, Vernon, I, I kind of wanted to go over the process of, of filing for someone. It starts yes. it starts at USIS. Okay. So you, well, that's the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service. It starts there. You, the, your, your petitioner in the United States files the petition there. Once it's time, it'll go to the National Visa Center. And then after that, it gets sent to Kingston. So sometimes it takes a while depending upon the category, like your particular category. I think it was cases that were filed in, it looks like 2004. So it takes a while to get to the embassy. Once it gets here, then we'll be able to talk about your case. So if, the, if somebody has indicated to you that you have an interview coming up, then you can reach out to the embassy directly. And that email address is Kingston IV at state. Kingston IV. Mm-hmm. Kingston IV at mm-hmm. state, state dot g o v okay and in that email you okay. just in that email you want to you know tell them your son's name um the visa category and any information that you've received from the national visa center or from usis okay okay then and Thank then we'll yep and then we'll go from there but good luck okay Okay, All right, thank you thank very you. much for calling, and you have a wonderful day. All right, I think we have no Maxine on the line, so let's go to Maxine. Maxine, how are you? Where are you calling from? Maxine, good morning, Maxine. Uh, okay, I think we lost, we lost Maxine. I think we lost Maxine. I think probably her credit ran out, so we have to uh, to let me stay there. Don't move. We're trying to get to another caller. But Maxine, sorry, I think we lost you. What you should probably do is to uh, try calling back again. All right. Yeah. So let me just remind you of the numbers that you can call at 630 630-9371, 630-9372, 630-9373, 630-9374. And our cell number is uh, 6188255. I think we have Juliet on the line. Good morning, Juliet. How are you doing? Good morning. And where are you calling from? Oh, let me guess though. I hope it's St. Elizabeth. No, it's Manchester. I know it's so many of us. just next door, man. Good to have you. Yes. You go ahead. Yes. Um, I went to Curacao in 2006, but I overstayed three months. So um, I went to the embassy now, and um, they said I have to get a police record from Curacao. And I can't get through. I don't know what to do. I try a lot of things. No, hold on. Where's your can't get through to who? To the person in to Curacao or what? Yes, um, I have a friend in Curacao, and I asked her to go and check for me. She went to the station, and they said I have to come and get it myself. Which in I don't have a passport because the embassy have my passport. That's so. The, so the embassy would still have your passport. That's unusual. Um, yes. Cindy. Uh, um, yeah. Hi, Juliet. Um, yes, this sounds a, this sounds a lot like a call that um, I just took a little bit ago. Um, with regard to your passport or a- any applicant who the embassy has said, you know, I need 
these documents before I can process your case, you can always write back to the embassy um, at our email address and say, and, and just indicate, look, I need my passport in order to go and get this document, okay? I did that. I did that. Um, I, I, I email them and tell them the problem I have, I can't get you, and I don't know who to contact or whatever because Curacao don't want to give me, they, have, they said I have to come and get it myself. So, um, I don't know what else to do because I can't go to Curacao without a passport. Okay, and, and so... And the embassy said I should contact the local authorities, that's all they tell me. Okay, well, I think it, what you what you could try to do is, again, email the embassy one more time at yes, King's... Yes, I, I did that last week, Thursday, and they said, um, in space of um, five working days, I will hear from them. Well, tomorrow will be the last... So you got a response? Five. You got a response? No, I don't get, I get a first response, but... I don't get the last one. Well, why don't, why, don't, last week, why don't you just put in, in the subject line of your email that you spoke to Cindy on the radio show, on Vernon's radio show, and, and that I, I instructed you to, to email the embassy about getting your passport, okay? And, and maybe see if that shakes anything loose. Um, the email box is, is definitely monitored. Um, get, you know, give it another day, but if not, send out that email. Just tell them that I sent you, I sent you back there to get your passport, okay? Because that's, that's, cool. if Curacao is indicating that that's, that, that that's the way that it needs to be done, then uh, unfortunately that's what you're going to have to do. We don't control, you know, Curacao or how they um, give out their, their police certificates or any of their civil documents, actually. So so go ahead and send us another email and just say, hey, I need to pick up my passport. I only need it, you know, temporarily. And then once you get that form that we're requesting, ma'am, you're going to send back your passport. You'll send back in the form, and then we'll look at your case again, Okay. Okay. Good luck. So the, okay. Thanks very much. You're, you bet. All Have right. a good day. You show you're okay. clear, right? And if you want to uh, listen to the show again, it's repeated tonight at about uh, 11 o'clock, so you can always listen. All right? Okay. All okay. the best. You have Thanks a good day. Yes. Uh, we have another caller. Let's go now to Lisa. Lisa, how are you doing? Hi, okay, my name is Mr. Darby. I'm going to go to the phone. I'm, I'm not here. You have to lift that voice. I'm not hearing you at all. Okay, I'm going to go I'm going to my no, I think okay. we're having a problem with that line. Lisa, we're having a problem with that line. You probably have to try calling again because we can hardly hear. But uh, Cindy or Brian, now there are many persons out there. They, they, I think they probably have, have been deported or visa has been refused. And they're asking, you know, if they want to appeal, um, how do they go about appealing a decision that has been made by consular officers? And if Brian, you want to? Sure, sure. So, um, typically, for there's different types of reasons why people might maybe refuse the visa. Yes. And um, you, know, one of the main main refusals that we give, it's people who come to the embassy to get a green sheet of paper. There's actually no appeal for that. Um, but when people are applying for a, a visa. A, they can make their case to the officer and explain what happened to them in the past. Mm -hmm. And then it's the officer's decision on whether the person qualifies for the visa or not. Mm -hmm. So people who are, y who have had a history, um, they can come to the, reapply for a visa, and during the interview, my best advice would be to explain what had happened, uh, explain the reasons why that had happened, and then the officer will make a decision um, based on, on the interview. But there's no, you know, typical place that they can write to and ask for an appeal on an old case. Once they apply and they've uh, been refused, then they have to apply again. They just apply again. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's go to our next caller, Stacy. Good morning, Stacy. How are you? It's good to have you. Hi. Stacy. Good morning. Good morning. Are you here with me? Uh, still cracking up a bit, but um, let's see what we can do. Go ahead. My daughter to the embassy. He has a visa though. He wanted to take her on vacation with him. But upon getting there, we both had an appointment. That was the baby and myself. Sitting there, um, one of the persons that were checking off the list asked if she was my child also. 
And I said yes, but I was the one who made an appointment, right? But they said that I should, I should be the one to take her in, so they sent the father out. Anyway, we went in. She was denied. We were both denied the visa. My spouse, he wrote an email. He sent an email stating his complaint, right? But he did not get a response because he was saying the day that he was the one who was taking his daughter because he really wanted to take her with him at the time. In. I'm trying to understand. So what's the problem? I'm trying to understand. What's the challenge you're having? Well, yeah. No, the line is very bad. I tell you what, we have to go because we're not hearing you. You'd have to probably you call back here. Now? Um, yes, tell me now very quickly. I have a, uh, probably 10 seconds. What is the problem you're now having? He wrote an email but did not get a response. He was querying why the decision was made to send him out. And he was the one who made an appointment. Okay, remember that I said you should check your your junk mail because he, we checked that we no checked response. that we didn't get a response. Okay, uh, Cindy or Brian, I, I would like to say because we've had a few questions about email today. Is that yes. we we do actually read all the emails immediately when you email. There's an auto reply first, but right. then because of the volume of emails that we get, it takes some time to get to, to each question. But I assure you that people are reading these emails. Uh, I, again, I don't know this particular case, so I can't say right. you know, what happened. But um, you know, I, I will, when I get back to the embassy today, I can ask around to see um, if someone has read that email yet. But Brian, the fact that you said that uh, uh, the person, the sender will get an auto or, or will be automatically responded to. It tells me that um, persons definitely need to check their junk mail. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because it's not a matter of uh, the staff members not responding because the system would automatically respond and to uh, that email. And in the auto, yes. and, in, and in the auto response, there's yes. often answers to common questions or other ways to follow up on a case too. Yes. So you know, check your junk mail. Make sure you read the auto response mm -hmm. that might answer your no, question. I did get a mail to say that they would have looked into the case and then we would have gotten a response. But upon, um, that was not the mail that we received. But I want to know, though, is this. If he's take her back now, would there be an issue again? Because uh, he already has a visa. Well, Stacey, um, just, to, just to tell you a little bit about um, how the interview process works, it it isn't that we look at well this child you know is traveling with a parent that has a visa or doesn't have a visa um, or this mother didn't come in with with her husband or didn't come in with the father of the child we look at a myriad of different factors and so each time you come to the interview um, it's really not based on your relationship to other people. You and your daughter would be v evaluated as individuals. So I, I, would, I would hesitate or caution you to, to think that you know, it had something to do with the fact that you came in with the, your daughter as opposed to your husband um, coming in with a daughter. And, and just remember that your daughter is she's definitely free to apply again she can she can come in with with your husband um, she could come in again with you but I can't guarantee that that there would be a different result so because the officer is the one that's going to determine uh, lots of different factors in, in making no I understand that part the only part I didn't really get was the morning we were outside yep. waiting hold on we have to go in. now because I think what you do you're trying to go more into your personal case and as you know the embassy staff they do not going to uh, a specific cases. They give you general answers. All right. As hard if there is anything further they can assist you with. All right. All so right, try. You, you just try again. As she said to you before, Cindy said to you, just try again. All right. And I all wish right, you all the best. Thanks, wish good you luck. success. You yeah. see. Yeah. Good luck. All right. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. We let's go now to Lorraine. Good morning, Lorraine. How are you? Where are you calling good. from? I'm calling from Kingston. Good morning, Mr. Darby and your guest. Good morning. Good to have morning. you. I love that voice of yours, sounding quite, yes. you know. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, if, if I want to travel with my employer as a nanny, and I got a visa, would it, would it be only to travel with them, or can I go on my own? Uh, Cindy, you want to take that one? Oh, oh, I'll take it. So, hi, Lorraine. How are you? Not bad. So there, there's different kinds of visas. So 
nannies can travel travel with their employers, and that's called a B1 yes. visa. Um, yes. There's also another visa that the embassy provides called a, called a B1-B2 visa. And so okay. during your interview, you would make your case, present your information to qualify for those visas. Um, for the B1 visa to travel as a nanny, typically yes. you need to bring a contract uh, between yes. you, and your, your, you and your employer um, yes. as you travel to the United States. And for the B1, B2 visa uh, to travel as a tourist, you would talk yes. to the um, interviewing officer to see if you would qualify. Okay, thank you. Okay, good luck. All right, thank you very much for calling, and you have a wonderful day. I think this will be our final caller, and we have Lita. Lita, you only have yes. probably um, uh, one minute. Okay, yes. thank you. Good morning to you and your guest. Good, good morning. morning. Yes, I um, have a quick question about the international schools and who is eligible. Um, I have uh, my granddaughter living with me here, and she is actually um, from the States, American. And she was interested in, in international schools. So just wonder how she goes about it from here. With the international schools in Kingston? Yes. Uh-huh. No, no, I think you I think you want to attend the want your child to attend the fair, right? Oh, she have to attend the fair. Yeah, there's okay. a fair we're having they're having uh, in Kingston. So okay. what are you interested in for your grandchild to attend the fair? Um she was interested in going to an international school. Oh, you mean in, in, the, in the United States? Anywhere. <laughs> okay, well, the United States Embassy, they're having a uh, college fair, am I correct, uh, Brian? Correct, And this correct. is on July 20 to 21. October. Why am I saying July? <laughs> it's October it's always, sunny. It's always sunny here. It's always sunny and warm in Jamaica. Yeah. <laughs> and the first one will be at the American International School of Kingston, uh, located at 2 College Green Avenue, Kingston 6. And that will be on October 20. And on October 21, they will be at Hillel Academy. And that is at 51 Upper Mark Way. And uh, it starts at 1.30 p.m. And it goes up until 6 p.m. All right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, and thank you very much for calling. And thank you to you. Same to you. All Bye. the best, then. Yep. <laughs> well, we have come to the end of another program. Uh, Cindy? You seem to have a final point. Oh, no, I was just going to tell, you know, the caller or any of our callers just to yeah. be sure to check out our Facebook page. A lot of the information and some yeah. of the questions and doubts can be can be found there at U.S. Em uh, it's just U.S. Embassy Jamaica, and it's it's on the Facebook page. You okay. can also follow us on Twitter. There's a lot of interesting things happening between the United States and Jamaica right now. You can follow us on Twitter at at U.S. Embassy J.A. And if they follow me, they'll also be following you because I'm giving them the information. <laughs> Absolutely. Also. Which we love, Mr. Darby, we love. <laughs> yes, all right. Well, thank you very much. And for the last time, I will attempt to call the names. And I hope I get it right again. Or else I know you're going to fire me. You've been good so far. Thank you very much, Cindy Joof. You got it. Perfect. A plus. Let me know, taking a deep breath. Thank you very much, Brian See, I tell you, I slipped up. Joe me what I'll yeah. give you A plus plus. <laughs> Thank you. <Thanks. laughs> no, okay, no, no. I, I, I'm sure that name has uh, something linked to th uh, Thailand or something. Thailand, correct. Ah, yeah. I see, I guess. Right. Bingo. <laughs> okay, nice. thank you very much for being here. Until thank next time, we'll nice. see you again. Thank you. Right. Have a good day. All the best right. then. All the best right. then. All the best right. then. All the best right. then.